Hi, Dave Caudle here with another top tip for your career. This one is all about CVs. And I'm going to give you a whistle stop tour from the top of the CV right down to the bottom so you can understand what you need in that CV. So right at the top, header information, you need your name up there, nice and big and bold. You need an email address, a phone number, and you need a link to your LinkedIn profile, assuming that it's up to date, of course. In terms of your postal address, you don't need your full postal address these days. Below that is going to be your profile. The purpose of that is to give your reader reasons to want to bother carrying on reading down that CV. So it needs to get across who you are professionally. What are the key skills and qualities that you bring to the table that are relevant for the roles that you're going for? And you can also use it to highlight anything else that helps you stand out from the crowd. And it's going to be a paragraph of about five lines long. If there's other key bits of information there. You could have a brief key skills or key achievements section there. Or perhaps if you've got things like patents or publications, just list the main ones there. But don't take up the whole page. You need to get into your achievements, the reasons why they might want to invite you in for an interview. And how you organise your achievements will depend on what your target is. If your target is to go for a similar role or maybe just that step up, then you need to organise your achievements by when you use them and where you use them, or when you did them and where you did them. If you're going for a complete career change or some great big different sort of role, maybe a functional CV which displays and groups your achievements by the type of skill they represent may work better for you. And your achievements need to be succinct, they need to get across what you did and the benefits that you've brought to the organisation. Once you've dealt with your career and your achievements, you then need to think what other information do I need? So underneath that we'll probably have qualifications, we'll have professional membership, all of this needs to be relevant, of course, to your target market. You might have language skills. You might have um, you know, a differentiation between academic skills and professional skills in terms of, in terms of training and qualifications. Um, and underneath that, you may choose to have something about your outside interests so that the, the reader, if they've read that far, obviously they're interested in you. It just gives them a picture of you as a real person. So that's a whistle stop tour down your CV. That's all the key things that you need to include. You don't need things like reasons for leaving. You don't need to say who your references are. You don't need to uh, say anything about what your salaries were either. Unless, with all of this information, unless you've been specifically asked for that information. So that's your, your basics for your CV. Do, if you want some more help with that, there are some free templates and some courses you can buy into on www.davecordle.co.uk. Look for the resources button. I'll see you in another video.